Well, good morning, Chapel Roswell. It's so good to be with you today. I'm Kristen Hyden, one of the pastors here, and I add my welcome to Eric's from earlier. This morning, we are closing out our look on these good questions that Jesus asks. We started first with one that was a little bit more introspective. What are you looking for? Then we turned to one that was a little bit more Christ-focused as Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? And then last week, we turned our focus outward into the community and out into the world as we asked, do you see this woman? If you missed any of those sermons or from the past few weeks, I encourage you to check out our YouTube channel or our podcast so you can really hear some of the nuances of these good questions that Jesus asks. Now this morning we turn to a question that at least on the surface seems fairly simple. An answer that can be quantified and given very directly. But as we've come to learn when it comes to conversations with Jesus, not everything is very straightforward. And so we're turning to the Gospel of Mark We find Jesus having just sent out his disciples, his students, out in groups of two on on a missionary journey. He gives them very strict instructions as they head out. He tells them to take nothing for the journey except a walking stick. No bread, no bags, no money in your belts. And so off they go to proclaim the good news of Jesus, to cast out demons, to place healing hands on the sick. They gather back together when they hear the news of the death of John the Baptist, or John the Baptizer, as we've come to call him here in Chapel Roswell. And so they attempt to gather together and go off in a deserted place to be alone, just Jesus and his students. But the people, the crowds, they hear of these plans. And so they also go to the deserted place. They actually beat Jesus there because they are waiting to hear what he has to say. And so that's where we pick up this morning in Mark chapter 6. Verse 34, you'll see it up on the screens or you can find it on the Chapel Roswell app. When Jesus arrived and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Then he began to teach them many things. Late in the day, his disciples came to him and said, this is an isolated place and it's already late in the day. Send them away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy something to eat for themselves. Jesus replied, you give them something to eat. But they said to him, should we go off and buy bread worth almost eight months pay and give it to them to eat? Jesus said to them, how much bread do you have? Take a look. After checking, they said five loaves of bread and two fish. And so he directed the disciples to seat all the people in groups as though they were having a banquet on the green grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven, blessed them, broke the loaves into pieces, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all, and everyone ate until they were full. They filled 12 baskets with the leftover pieces of bread and fish, and about 5,000 had eaten. Now this, of course, is the story of the feeding of the 5,000, one of the most familiar stories of Jesus, and one that actually appears in all four of the Gospels. Now I love this story because it starts out in a rather unmiraculous type of way. The people gather and they are hungry. They are hungry to hear from Jesus, to hear what words he will share with them, to see the ways that he will reach out to them and transform their lives. But as the day goes on, they become less spiritually hungry and more physically hungry. The sun is setting, and so it's dinner time. 
the people got to eat. And so the disciples go to Jesus and they're so pragmatic, these disciples, right? Let's just send them away. They can go get some food to eat. But I really think the disciples are saying is we need to go get something to eat. So let's just send these people away so we can take care of ourselves. But Jesus gives them a most unexpected answer. You give them something to eat. Can you see their faces? Excuse me, Jesus. I imagine their response went something like this. You want us, who you just sent out with no bread and no money, um, to now go buy bread for all these people. <laughs> You're hilarious, Jesus. <laughs> but Jesus, he stays firm. Maybe he's not picking up on their sarcasm, or maybe he just chooses to ignore it. But he looks at them and he says, how much bread do you have? How much bread do you have? He's looking for an answer, right? He's looking for an honest answer. Count the bread and give me an answer. He even says it after the question. He says, how much bread do you have? Take a look. I want to know. You can see the disciples now. They've got him. We've only got five loaves of bread and two fish. That's not even enough to feed us. There's no way that's going to feed all of these people. They should really know better at this point. And so the miracle begins. Jesus takes the bread. He blesses the bread. He breaks it. And they share a meal. The people eat and they eat and they eat until their bellies are full. And we're told that there are even leftovers from this great banquet feast. Jesus takes what seems like so little and multiplies it exponentially. What was not nearly enough becomes more than enough. What was deemed too little proves to be abundant. What was just the traveling food of the poor becomes a banquet feast. And it all began with one simple question. How much bread do you have? Now, as with any seemingly miraculous story, we want to find right, a reason, a, an explanation for it. We want to we rationalize it. And we say, well, the people, of course, they, they were inspired by, by the disciples sharing what they had. And so as they gathered in their groups, they shared what they had. And it's really, it's a great story about people sharing with each other. <laughs> Look what can happen when we share. I mean, I can get behind that. I mean, it would be perhaps a miracle for a bunch of people, 5,000 of them, who many were strangers to one another, to actually share what they had. That might be a miracle, especially today. But I don't think this, this story, this story that each of the gospel writers felt was so crucial to tell, can be boiled down to just a sweet story with a good moral. The works of God are are bigger than any morality tale. Instead, the miracle, it lies in the hands of Jesus. When we offer to Christ what we have, no matter how much or how little, Jesus does something with it. 
Jesus takes what the disciples have, five loaves of bread and two fish, and he does something with it. That continues to be the miracle in our lives. That Jesus takes what we have and he actually does something with it. Have you experienced that in your life or maybe in the life of someone you know and you love that Jesus has taken what they have and performed miracles with it? Jesus asks all of us this question, how much bread do you have? Now it would be easy for us to flippantly answer just the way the disciples seemed like they wanted to. Right, not enough. How much do you have? Not enough, Jesus. I just don't have enough. In the face of the crowds that were surrounding them, the disciples said they didn't have enough. And in the face of the crowds that surround us, we answer Jesus, I just don't have enough. I don't have enough food to feed the hungry. I don't have enough water to quench the thirst of the thirsty. There's not enough room in my house for the homeless. I don't have a strong enough voice for the voiceless. I don't have enough power. I don't have enough influence. I don't have enough money. I just don't have enough. But Jesus says to us, take a look. Take a look at what you do have. Five loaves of bread and two fish, perfect. I can do something with that. You got a loaf of bread and a jar of peanut butter, perfect. I can do something with that. You have a desire to, to build wells for clean water or to serve in the food pantry, perfect. I can do something with it. Do you have a, a connection in government or maybe know someone who's influential in the community? Perfect. I can do something with that. Do you like to play with children or lend an ear to the widow to hear her stories? Perfect. I can do something with it. You have just the shirt on your back or the dollar in your pocket? Jesus says, perfect, because I can do something with that. If we take a look, surely we have something to give, something, anything. If we will give it to Jesus, if we will allow Christ to work in our lives, to break down our fears, to break down the lie that we don't have enough, to break down the even greater lie that we are not enough, Jesus will do something with that. This afternoon, Chapel Roswell is taking part in Miss Mary's Ice Cream Crankin', benefiting the Drake House. Do you know anything about the Drake House or Miss Mary? Well, the Drake House, named for Mary Drake, provides short-term crisis housing and education and, and empowerment programs for single women and their children here in our area. In 1982, Mary Drake was the director for Economic Opportunity Atlanta. It was an organization that was funded as, as part of President Lyndon Johnson's War on Poverty. And in that year, she met with concerned citizens in our area, and they saw a great need. The crowds had gathered, and they were hungry, and they were thirsty, and they needed a place to live. 
And so Mary gathered with these people and they said, in essence, how much bread do we have? And so they started calling churches and organizations. And by the next year, the food pantry began. And by 1988, North Fulton Community Charities was an official organization. In this past year, North Fulton served 5,000 families. It's a familiar number this morning. Distributes over nine tons of food a week and assists local residents with over a million dollars in rent and utilities and basic needs. Five loaves of bread and two fish miraculously multiplied. Miss Mary was talking about how NFCC came to be, talking to the AJC, and they said, how did, it, how did it get started? And she said, well, actually, I think the preachers just kept getting sick of me calling. <laughs> and so they gave. How much bread did she have? A passion and a phone. And you know what Jesus said? Perfect. I can do something with that. But the miracle of our story, it doesn't end there. It's not just that Jesus takes what we have and makes enough. Jesus takes it and makes more than enough. Jesus takes it and reminds us that the kingdom of God is not one of scarcity, but of abundance. That even in those isolated and deserted places where we find ourselves in life, Jesus will give us what we need. Jesus will provide more than enough. Did you hear that in the story that, that at the end there were more leftovers than when the story began? There was enough to fill them up, belly and soul. And the leftovers. The leftovers, they even count the leftovers because what the world may deem as leftover and not needed, Jesus lifts back up. No leftovers, an abundance. They're just as important. You see, this is the God we serve. This is the Christ that we proclaim, a power that increases what we believe is not enough. A grace that recognizes and embraces what this world deems as leftovers. A love that sees us, that sees what we have, that sees who we are, and says, you are more than enough. Let's do something together. Now, I don't mean for it to sound oversimplified or, or even easy. I mean, it takes a lot of us. It requires something of us for this miracle to happen. Right? The crowds, they were desperate. And so they went to Jesus and they suspended this disbelief that nothing could help them. And they said, let's give Jesus a try. And they put their hope in Jesus for what they needed. And Jesus said, yes, I'm here for you. Are we ready to venture to some of those deserted and isolated places 
where we have to lean not on our own understanding, to lean not on our own abilities, and instead offer it up to Jesus and allow him to do something with it. Are we willing to to let go of our fear of failure to the world's idea of what success is and turn instead to the kingdom of God where there is more than enough for everyone and where you are enough no matter who you are, no matter where you've been, you are more than enough. And Jesus looks at you and says, perfect. Let's work a miracle together. I don't want to be like the disciples, paralyzed by the need of the great crowd. I don't want you to be paralyzed by the great needs that you see in this world, by the great needs that you see in your life and in the lives of those around you. Instead, let's turn to Jesus and answer the question, how much bread do you have? Take a look. This is what I have. It may not be much, but this is what I have. Will you take it, Jesus, and do something beautiful? Do something amazing. Do something miraculous. Do you believe that's possible? with what you have and with with who you are. Jesus will do something miraculous. Let it be, let it be. Will you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, Lord, we hear this morning that what we have is more than enough. That who we are is more than enough when the power of the divine is behind us. God, break down our fears. Break down our worries. Help us to be free to give of ourselves. that we may offer the five loaves of bread and the two fish for your glory and for your kingdom. And that together, as your children, miracles will happen in this world by the grace of God through the love of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.